Hi everyone, meteorologist Joe Chaffee uh, for uh, meteorologistjoechaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, ssstormchasers.com, and soon to be nycweathernow.com. Uh, we are going to have a tropical storm on the map uh, today uh, as soon as the uh, Air Force Reconnaissance aircraft verifies that there's a closed circulation here because the wind criteria is there. I, I have already seen wind reports of uh, 40, 45 knots uh, on the north side, uh, just north of Barbados. So uh, this thing is going to probably become either a depression or a tropical storm, more than likely a tropical storm if a center is closed off. You know, certainly when we look at the water vapor imagery, and I, I put this up this morning because it really kind of gives you a good picture of what's going on. This is a very, very large system embedded in a very deep moisture flow that uh, went all the way back when the system started out in the intertropical convergence zone. And you can see it goes way back westward uh, into uh, the deep tropics. And you can also see where the, you know, the drier air that's well to the north and east now uh, none of this dry air that was sitting up here or earlier was sitting to the north of it uh, got entrained to the circulation. If anything, the system seems to be saturating uh, the area uh, to its north as it has a very, very large diameter going uh, many hundreds of miles to the north and to the south. So this is a very impressive system atmospherically. Now, when we look in the eastern Caribbean, uh, toward this is uh, we have uh, Aruba and Curacao here. You can see these uh, clouds are blowing uh, from the uh, south southwest, uh, running uh, northeastward. So there's a little bit of shear going on uh, in, in, in south of Puerto Rico in that zone where this is headed. But one of the things that's happening is here's this upper low that's kind of orchestrating these strong winds. This is gradually getting eroded uh, as it. Um, as, as time goes by, and, and this system seems to be overpowering everything as it moves westward. So um, everything is on course. You can see the old frontal zone along the east coast. There's a big upper air storm way out in the Atlantic that's dropping southward. Um, once uh, it gets uh, into uh, the central Caribbean, um, assuming that all this shear is gone, it's going to meet for fairly favorable conditions. In fact, it looks like there isn't too much happening uh, even in the Eastern Caribbean, there's a little bit of dry air that comes off the mountains of South America, but that doesn't seem to be making any inroads. The moisture field is growing in the Eastern Caribbean. So uh, to me, this is going to be a very impressive system. Now, we're going to come back to that in, in just a second. I want to focus uh, attention now on <clears throat> local weather. And it looks like we're going to have two decent surges of rain coming in. So let me back up on the GFS, which has gotten... Uh, a little more bullish with the rainfall, and I'm kind of happy to see that. I really hope this is right. Uh, it's got two surges of rain coming in. Uh, one that comes in tonight doesn't quite make it east of New York City and the Hudson Valley, initially anyway, but then gradually uh, it pushes off uh, to the northeast uh, into uh, southern New England and over Long Island. That first surge does go into New Jersey pretty well and also into Pennsylvania. So we bring that through a later Thursday into Friday morning, and then another arm rotates around uh, and brings rain here uh, for f Saturday into Saturday night, and even has rain lingering here into Sunday afternoon before finally uh, it pulls away uh, to the northeast. So uh, that's that's uh, the way it's it, it looks uh, on on the GFS anyway. And then of course as we move into next week. We have this big high that builds in uh, from in eastern Canada, setting up <clears throat> a strong, uh, uh, moist onshore flow. And then we start to deal with whatever we're dealing with with regards to this, the tropical system, which on um, on the last three runs of the model, actually uh, more than that, it's, it, it's, it's very consistent in, in what the model is doing with this tropical system as it moves it. Uh, up the East Coast. Now, I, I'm going to uh, caution everybody, the, this is not a forecast, this, this is what the model does, the model output, and we're going to uh, see um, uh, some differences between the two models. Now here, um, I, I, I want to just make that clear, okay, this is not a forecast, this is what the models, are. this one particular model is doing. Now, if this is correct, it would take a, a, a Category 1 
uh, or, or maybe a uh, borderline category two hurricane into North Carolina and, and move it up as probably as a strong tropical storm just inland of the coast. That's what this model output is saying. And we are going to see differences here with regards to uh, where uh, models are taking things uh, down the road. So I want to look at the upper air. And again, the, the key to the forecast, as we've been saying, is uh, this, this is the big, the, the big cutoff low that we've been seeing in the eastern states. And it's going to gradually open up and head to the northeast. And I'll widen the picture out for you. Um, so you can take a look at at, at um, the entire Western Atlantic. Take a look at that view. Because that'll work a little better. Okay, so here we have, this is the GFS now, and I'll move myself out of the way into the corner. So here we have the uh, GFS model. And we'll put this like that. Okay, so here, here's the upper low. Okay, here's the tropical system. Here's the weakness that's uh, going on. Uh, you've got this trough that extends southward into the Gulf of Mexico, and it's just enough of a weakness for this system to turn around and move with that big ridge, uh, move around the big ridge into that space right in between. So the, the, the question uh, is going to be uh, in th terms of timing. All, what's really remarkable is all the models really agree pretty much right through this point they're very very close even the european um and, and the gfs are, are reason very very close in how they bring this up but one of the issues that i'm going to show you with the european that i have with the european at the moment uh and this is something that i'm gonna we're gonna have to figure out if it's real i don't i think the european has a little bit of a problem um not in what it does because you know it, it's the same concept here uh we're looking at um, Sunday night's weather map. So we've got this. Here's the upper low and the extending trough. Here's the ridge out in the Atlantic right there. And there's that alleyway that opens up in between. The ridge on the European is perhaps a little bit stronger, um, which is not unusual for what for, for, for this particular model. And uh, it, it usually the GFS tends to weaken the Atlantic ridge uh, just a little bit uh, too much. So we're going to have to bear that in mind. But one of the things the European does that I, I take a little issue with is that it has a much stronger uh, tropical system, um, much stronger uh, as it moves through uh, the uh, north, in, in, uh, moves through the northern Caribbean and heads down, heads into the Bahamas. It also takes much longer to get to uh, the, its final destination. Uh, which is 10 days from now. So I'm going to show you here where the uh, European has um, a, a Category 3 hurricane basically taking it right over Jamaica. Takes it, a Category 3 hurricane right over Jamaica. Again, this is what the model's doing. I'm not forecasting this. Um, but we go to the GFS. Uh, it has uh, a much weaker system, uh, probably as a strong tropical storm, moving across western Cuba and coming out the other side. And I have to tell you, you know, that's going to be a very important key here in the forecast going forward. And that is, um, if we wind up with a very, a much deeper system, um, a la the European, uh, you are going to have it probably come out slower. So the difference is that the European has that right about here and the GFS has it right there. So there's a difference in positioning which is going to make a huge difference in what happens down the road because in terms of timing uh, we have um, this next trough that's coming in from the west and that is going to be um, extremely important in, in how this winds up uh, here we have the GFS and you can see here's the next trough out in the plains rotating around right there Okay, so here's the tropical system, and it, this thing is driving the atmosphere up uh, along the East Coast, and you've got this big ridge up in eastern Canada, so, you know, it's, it's playing right into a big high, surface high. So this thing is going to move up uh, as this trough lifts up and around. Makes, you know, it, it makes sense with what the model output says. You can see it right there. It kind of, as, as that trough swings around, it, it takes the tropical system 
and lifts it northward up along the coast. The European, however, because of timing, since it has a deeper system that takes longer to come out, and I'm just going to um, go back to the European now. Now, here's the difference with the European. The trough, it misses this trough, okay? So here's that cutoff low that moves out, all right? And now we've got the trough on the European. It's already swinging around here, and this tropical system is, is much further south. So that trough misses. Uh, instead of going, getting picked up, it's going to react to uh, whatever's going on here which is a, a little ridge that's building up. So uh, when we move this along, what happens is a ridge starts to build uh, in, on, in the uh, southeast and across the lower Gulf states right there. So the tropical system misses all this, all right? So this is going to be very, very important. Is the European correct on showing a much stronger hurricane uh, in the Eastern Caribbean, which effectively, uh, according to the model, slows everything down and, do, and this winds up missing uh, the trough that's out to the west. And if that is the case, then um, this would suggest that uh, th there would be a, a possible impact to uh, the state of Florida and the Florida Keys rather than take something up um, to the north-northwest faster like the GFS. I have to tell you, I mean, in, in my, you know, my own view on this is that since the European has <clears throat> a number of times uh, this uh, hurricane season um, made big hurricanes that did not happen, uh, I'm a little suspect of the depth that the tropical system that it, that it produces. Um, the GFS to me, uh, I think, makes more sense in the context of the kind of season we've had so far, uh, but you know, it, this is one of those deals where we, we're getting into into late September, early October. The water temperatures down in the uh, Caribbean there are incredibly warm. If we have <clears throat> an ideal uh, low shear environment, uh, we could see some uh, super strengthening. And by the way, the other issue I have with the European is, and let me punch it back up because this was uh, also important. Um, what I didn't understand about the model is, uh, I, I could, I could kind of get the depth if you want to accept it because it has a much deeper system uh, down at this point. In fact, you know what? Let's go. I, I can go even uh, closer than this. We'll take this, this view. Uh, I think this works better. So it has a much deeper system. Okay, that's a Category 3 hurricane that it takes right over Jamaica. It leaves it a Category 3 hurricane and moves it across Cuba. And actually, what, what I find phenomenal I mean, not that I expected this to weaken a lot, but it really barely weakens it at all as it moves across Cuba, and then it strengthens it to a Category 4 hurricane in the Bahamas as it turns uh, northwestward. So it, it, it has it moving north, northeast, and then it turns northward and northwestward. Uh, again, I'm not sure whether I agree that this is going to be as deep as it is. If, it, if, if the depth, if we do wind up with a deeper hurricane that takes longer and longer to move uh, northward, then the European may have the better idea. If it winds up being a weaker system that moves uh, uh, faster in the flow, then the GFS might have the better idea. These are all the, among many long-term questions that we have. Again, I want to caution everybody. This is These are model outputs. These are not my forecasts. I'm trying to give you an illustration from what's going on uh, in the tropics uh, with regards to this. And I want to come back uh, just locally one more time to us in terms of the rainfall the model output for rainfall is pretty bullish uh, through um, Sunday uh, night. Uh, it's back to giving some uh, three and four inch rain amounts over Long Island and parts of central and even northern New Jersey uh, and one to two inch amounts uh, at the very least for everybody else. So uh, I think we're pretty well on course for a, a good soaking, uh, much needed uh, drought uh, relieving um, rain, not completely drought relief, uh, but uh, at, uh, not complete drought relief, but something that makes a dent in this drought situation. So don't forget uh, ssstormchasers.com uh, for any uh, severe weather that breaks. And there's also, we've got some flood watches up for areas to the south. So they'll be, a pay, they'll be paying close attention to that. And we've got uh, all the latest weather information, meteorologist joechoppy.com. 
weatherlongisland.com.